Welcome to Coach Bennett's Podcast, where every run has a purpose, where kindness is hardcore, where this is about running, and this is not about running, where every starting line is a finish line in disguise, where rambling still gets you where you need to be, where pineapple will never ruin your pizza, and the sodas, adult and not adult kind, are always cold, and where there is room on the starting line for everybody. I'm Coach Bennett. Thank you for letting me be a part of your day. Let's get started. This is episode 15 of Coach Bennett's podcast. Some terrible advice for runners. That's right. This entire podcast is me just giving terrible advice. Now, here's the thing. I've got so much bad advice. The key here is that I let you know It's bad advice. I let you know this is some of the worst advice for runners. That way, you can take this horrendous advice and you can use it to your advantage. You can learn from it. And therefore, in kind of a weird way, it becomes good advice. And that's what this podcast is all about today. Although towards the end, we're going to talk a little bit about the Diamond League finals that are taking place on U.S. soil for the first time ever. So that's really cool, too. Let's just get right into this because I've got some really bad advice for you. Welcome to episode 15 of Coach Bennett's podcast. That's right, episode 15. It's our quinceanera. How cool is that? The answer is really, really cool. Episode 15, and this is going to be a fun one because I get to unload on all of you some really, really terrible advice. That's right. Episode 15 is going to just be some terrible advice for runners. Now, there's a benefit to getting terrible advice as long as you know it's terrible advice. Okay? Like, great advice, it's great advice. And when you hear it, as long as you know it's great advice, it's advice that you can take advantage of. But great advice that you don't know is great advice isn't great advice. Well, it is great advice, but it could be worthless if you don't know how to take advantage of it is my point, which is why we're doing this because I think there is a benefit to knowing and hearing terrible advice for running if you know it's terrible advice. So we're just going to get right into it. We're just going to get started. I mean, I could tell you about what I've been doing, but maybe we'll save that for the end because this, this is going to be a good time and I've got so much bad advice. So much bad advice. You'd be amazed at how much bad advice I've got because I've been given bad advice. I've heard bad advice. I've, I've been told bad advice from runners that I've worked with, runners that I've run with. I've, I've heard terrible advice at the track, at races, in passing, on elevators. Sometimes I correct it and sometimes I just sit back and I just try to figure out how do I close my mouth here because I'm pretty sure my jaw just dropped wide open when I hear, here's one, we'll start with this, you're not a runner. Now, I'm not sure if that's advice, but I've heard it before it was given as advice. You know, like maybe somebody is about to start a run or is asking about starting in the sport or just finished a run and someone will come up to them or someone at some point has made them believe they're not a runner. Like that's just, that's some straight BS, okay? As far as I'm concerned, we are all meant to be runners. And there are runners that are running, and there are runners that are not running. And there are runners that are running, and runners that are not running, that have no idea how to run. So maybe they've convinced themselves that they're not runners. Maybe they've given the advice to themselves of, I can't do this because I'm not a runner, so I shouldn't do it. I shouldn't try to keep running. I shouldn't cross another starting line. This isn't for me. Maybe it was someone else that told them that. A friend who has no idea what they're talking about, or a coach who has no idea what they're talking about, or someone in their life that for whatever reason they respect their opinion and told them, you're not a runner. Listen, If you run, you're a runner. And you know why I can say that? Because that's what the dictionary says. The dictionary defines running as the act of a runner. So if you go for a run, you're a runner. It doesn't say anything about how long. 
doesn't say anything about how fast. It doesn't say, you know, if it's a, a crazy hard effort or if it's an easy effort or if it's on trails or on a track. If you run, you're a runner. That's all you need to know. So if I'm going to give you some good advice in response to that terrible advice, it's if you want to run, you can run, okay? Assuming you're not hurt or sick or anything like that, we're just going to assume you have the ability, the capability to run. And listen, running has nothing to do with pace, okay? Because a lot of people say, oh, I can, I can run, but it's basically walking. Well, basically walking is not walking. And the biggest difference between running and walking has nothing to do with pace. You can run slower than a walk. I'll tell you what, my wife Tammy, when she walks, I, I literally have to jog next to her. I have to run next to her. I can't walk that fast. But she's just walking. I'm running. The difference is I'm taking flight on each stride. She always has one foot attached to the ground. That's the difference between walking and running. Just flight. So get over yourself. If you say that you can walk but you can't run, uh, uh, uh. no, 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 no. Assuming you're healthy, you can run, and you're good enough to be a runner. You want to know why? Because you're always good enough. So that's my first piece of terrible advice. You're not a runner. Terrible, terrible. Okay, here's another good one. Running is always supposed to be hard. Oh, I mean, just come on. I hear people say this stuff. Running is always supposed to be hard. You're always supposed to be going at 11. You're supposed to be hammering all the time. Hardcore, 24-7. Oh, God. None of these people have ever reached an elite level in running. Not that it's based on that, but they give off the impression that they've guided people to an elite level or they themselves have been to an elite level, and that's why they can tell you without any hesitation and with an abnormal amount of veins popping out of their neck, running is always supposed to be hard, and it's actually the opposite. Running is not always supposed to be hard. Running is actually supposed to be easy most of the time. Yeah, running is not always supposed to be hard. In fact, if running is always hard, you're just running the wrong way. And you're probably not going to be running the wrong way for very long because you're going to get sick, injured, or mentally burn out. Because that's what happens to people who run hard all the time. You're supposed to have easy runs. Yeah, so if you want some really, really terrible advice, I mean, that's right up there. That's, that's, that's in the pantheon of worst pieces of advice. Running is always supposed to be hard. And listen... I'm kind of telling you this to you as an athlete, but if you're a coach and your athletes are, are acting like running is always hard, then the workouts you're giving them, the training you're giving them is terrible, okay? So just spend some time, look in the mirror, realize you're not coaching very well, and make some changes. Because like I said, the majority of their runs the overwhelming majority of their volume each week, whether you're measuring it by minutes, meters, or miles, should be easy or recovery runs. They mean the same thing, easy recovery runs, okay? So you got to check yourself, okay? If you're an athlete and all your runs are hard, do something about it. If you're a coach and your athletes are only running hard every day, man, your team is going to underperform like champions, okay? Try to wrap your head around that. Okay, here's another one which kind of tags along with the one I just gave. So that crap advice I just gave is running is always supposed to be hard. Well, the next piece of advice is running is always supposed to be easy. No, it's not. No, it's not. Nor will it. I mean, running sometimes is going to be hard. Sometimes it's supposed to be hard. Sometimes it's supposed to be really hard really hard. Sometimes it's supposed to be harder mentally than physically. Sometimes it's supposed to be harder physically than mentally. Sometimes it's supposed to be really hard, both mentally and physically. Sometimes it's going to be a challenge even on easy days. Yeah, sometimes even easy isn't easy. And it could be for any number of reasons. It could be that you had a stressful day at work and the idea of doing any kind of run, including an easy run, it's going to be a challenge. It's going to be tough to find the motivation, to find the inspiration, to go and do it. It could be that the weather is working against you 
and not for you. You know, it's really cold or really windy or really hot, really humid, whatever. It could be the time of day that you're forced to run. It's nighttime and maybe you don't feel comfortable running uh, for very long at nighttime or you're kind of limited to a certain area or you have to run on the track and it's hard really to get excited about that. Yes, yeah, sometimes running is hard. Sometimes running is a challenge. Okay, as long as you know that, then you're not going to panic when running becomes a challenge or running is hard. It doesn't mean you're doing something wrong. If you're out there and you're running consistently, yeah, what it means is is you're taking on all of the different ways a run can challenge you. Sometimes it's hard to even hold back on an easy run. So it's not even the fact that, you know, it's hard in terms of, oh, I'm tired or I'm stressed out. It's I want to run faster, but I know that I shouldn't because tomorrow I have a workout or I know I have a long run in a couple of days, so I have to be disciplined enough to not run too hard. Sometimes that's the hardest part. It's not running hard. Like, think about that. Sometimes the hardest part of running is keeping yourself from running hard hard. So there are so many different ways that running can be hard. And that's just part of the gig. That is part of the relationship you're going to have, where it's not always going to be easy. So when I hear people say stuff like, Oh, you know, your running should be whatever you want it to be. Yes. Running doesn't ever have to be hard. No. I mean, if you want to consistently run, you have to be okay with sometimes it's going to be a challenge. Sometimes it's going to be a challenge to be nice during the day because of things that are going on. Sometimes it's going to be hard to be, you know, super inspired or motivated at work or at home, at school, at practice. Yeah, that's just how it is. It's a roller coaster. You know what I mean? Not everything is a sweeping loop-de-loop if you love loop-de-loops. Sometimes it's a hard turn. Sometimes it's that really steep downhill where you're right on the precipice on that roller coaster. I don't do roller coasters much, but they are fun. And suddenly, woof, you go down and it, it feels like your your stomach and then your heart and then your soul just kind of get brought up through your neck into your head. And then suddenly you're heading back up again and it's crazy. And you're wondering why are wooden roller coasters so much scarier than kind of the the more modern ones, at least for me, wooden roller coasters, terrifying. So much fun though. Okay, next piece of bad advice. Running is bad for your knees. Uh, No, no it's not. I mean, if you have bad knees, then really any kind of impact might be bad for your knees. But just as a general piece of advice, and I hear it said to people all the time that either got started in running or they're about to start running, or they are runners, someone who in some way had knee issues or knows someone who had knee issues that also happened to run at some point, which is pretty much everybody, blames the running. No, you have to dig way deeper to find out why they're saying that. Because the blanket statement of running is bad for your knees, absolutely not. No way, no how, not true. I will say this, as you get older, and you start to run more consistently, it does make sense to strengthen different parts of your body so you can actually lessen the likelihood that you're going to have knee problems. Just like if you play basketball or tennis or football, it makes sense to do other types of training so you can be as strong as an athlete as possible so you can be as less likely as possible to get injured. That's what being an athlete is about. So, you know, doing things like strengthening your hips, strengthening your quads, doing drills where you're moving side to side, those are the types of things that can help you take on this activity in a way that will allow you to continue to take on this activity because you always want to be stronger than you're running. So have people injured their knees as runners? Absolutely. Do they all have unique circumstances? Yeah, we all have unique circumstances. Could some of that be mitigated maybe by doing cross-training, strengthening some of these areas, maybe training in a more intelligent way? Absolutely. But those blanket statements are like, oh, running is you know terrible for your knees. Okay, no, it's not. Stop it. Just stop it. And somehow 
Soccer is good for your knees, even though you run about a 10K during a soccer game, sorry, football game, or the side-to-side activity that you have in sports like tennis, basketball, but but that's not bad for your knees, but running is? I mean, what what is good for your knees? Not doing anything? I don't think so. So, terrible piece of advice. Running is bad for your knees. Oh, stop it. Here's another piece of terrible advice. You can always run through it, meaning sickness, injury, like what? I'm sorry, what? First of all, you can't always run through injury and sickness, okay? That's not true. I've had lots of injuries I couldn't run through. In fact, I've had injuries that trying to run through only exacerbated the problem, delayed the healing, and kept me from running more because eventually I couldn't run through it anymore because I simply couldn't run. And then when I realized I would have actually been back on a starting line sooner if I didn't have the blockhead mentality of I can run through it because I was an idiot. It's the same thing with sickness. If you can run and you're healthier at the end of the run than you were at the beginning, okay, fine. So maybe you're a little run down and you have to adjust your run probably, almost definitely, if you're a little run down and you were planning on running 35 minutes, well, you're probably going to have to back off because you're a little run down. You're not 100%. But let's just keep everything just as simple as possible. If you can do this run and at the end of it you're healthier, okay, then you can do the run. Now, keep in mind, you may be healthier, but you may not be as healthy as you could have been had you taken the day off. So that's something you got to think about. But if you do a run while you're sick just because you don't want to have a zero in your running log and finishing the run greatly delays your healing or sets it back rather than just slows it down, then you don't run. I mean, from a coaching perspective, I'd rather you not run for two or three days than run at 50% for 10 days and then 30% for four days and then finally tell you, you've got to stop running for seven days because now we're three weeks out of just garbage where we could have just taken two days, three days off. You're not going to lose any fitness. We'll come back. We'll ease into it. And by the time you are back at 100%, if we had done it, the stupid way, you would have been just getting to the realization of, I just had six or seven really terrible days of training, and now I'm really sick where I can't even run. And we haven't even started healing yet. Are you kidding me? Come on. Which is why you got to be honest, not just with your coaches, but with yourself, because you can't always run through it. You ready for another piece of terrible advice? I hope so, because I'm throwing it at you right now. You need to race a marathon. No, you, no, you don't. You absolutely 100% do not need to run a marathon. If you want to someday, that's great, but you don't need to. There isn't some secret society waiting for you after a marathon. It's not what makes you a real runner. But I can't tell you the amount of people after run number one start saying, I, you know, I, how long do you think it would be for me to be able to get ready to run a marathon or... You know, hopefully someday I can do the marathon, which is great. But I just wish people would be able to celebrate running and not think they have to do 26.2 miles or 42.2K. I think it's great. I think it's epic. I think it's badass to do a marathon. But you could spend your entire life never running a marathon and doing half marathons or 5Ks or road miles or trail races. You could never really race. And you could challenge yourself by just, you know, how many times can you run in a month or can you get enjoyment out of your run consistently? You know, believe me, you're going to be challenged out there on the run between the start and finish line, whether or not it's an official start and finish line that was put down by a race director and certified by some organization and hands you out, you know, medals and space blankets at the finish. You don't have to run a marathon. But I will also say this. It's terrible advice to tell somebody they can't. They might not be able to today. They might not be able to in a month or six months or nine months. But if you're consistent and you love this sport and you train, then yeah, the opportunity and the potential to one day cover 42.2 day, sure. So it's 
really bad advice to tell people they have to run a marathon. It's also really bad advice to tell somebody they should never try. Okay? Let's just worry about today, shall we? All right. I got, I mean, I told you I've got so many pieces of bad advice. It's terrific. Cool thing is, is when you're around the sport, as long as I've been, you just get to pick this stuff up. You know what I mean? It's like detritus. It's uh, like garbage. Every time you go somewhere and there's lots of runners around, there's always some bad advice floating around. I love it. And one of the cool things is um, every couple of years, there's like something new that's like hot and everyone's talking about. And it's it's usually um, really dumb, and which is why it, no one's talking about it like two years later. Anyway, let's move on. Let's get some more stuff. Okay. Um, you need to run every day. Why? Why? Why do you need to run every day? You can run every day, by the way, because people who say like you can't run every day, again, it's another one of those both sides are just terrible pieces of advice. The point is you don't need to run every day. Some people can't run every day. They shouldn't feel bad because they can't run every day. Sometimes it's because of scheduling. Sometimes it's because of the way their life is. Sometimes it's because they don't want to run every day. They run two to three times a week, four or five times a week, six days a week, they take a day off, fine. You don't have to run every single day, all right? Again, there's no card you're going to get. There's no special laurel wreath you're going to get to wear where people are going to go, now that, my friend, that's a runner. They run every day. And part of the reason why I'm saying this is because I don't want people to be beating themselves up for not running every day. What are you talking about? What is, you took a day off. Did you need the day off? Okay, great. So embrace what you can do. Try to marry it with what you need to do, and you'll be pretty happy. All right? So there you go. I, I'm, but like I said at the beginning of this last piece of bad advice, if you want to run every day, you can. It doesn't mean you're going to get hurt. You can't run hard every day. You can't run long every day. You can't do speed work every day. You know, you can't crank every single day when you're out there because running hard is the only way to run hard that was the first piece of terrible advice no but you can run every day if you're diversifying your training if you're changing the efforts if you're paying attention to your body you know and what you're considering like a minimum run makes sense then yeah sure there are people that have week-long streaks month-long streaks yearly streaks decade streaks multi-decade streaks you can run every day you also have to realize, though, that if you do start a streak, one of the agreements you should have with yourself, though, like one of the um, responsibilities you have to yourself, especially as your streak starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger, is that if running is not making you a better version of yourself, if it's not um, helping you have better days, then you stop the streak. The streak should be about you doing something on a daily basis that makes you better that you enjoy, that is a positive in your life. If it's draining some of the life force from you, you need to just end the streak. That's what you need to do. Question is, is do you have enough courage and guts to do that once the streak gets big enough? I hope so. Because if you remember why the streak started and why the streak continued for as long as it did, it was because you were doing something that was a net positive, something that ended the day with you better in some way, something that gave you life instead of drained it, all right? So that's just for all of you out there that are either streakers or potential streakers. Make sure the streak is making you better and not lesser, right? Okay, next one, because again, I've got so many. Speed runs, track workouts, trail running. It's only for serious runners. What? Who said that? Who's making these rules up? And you know what it is? A lot of this actually isn't coming from the people doing speed runs on tracks or on the trails. A lot of times it's coming from the insecurities of the people that are not on the track, not on the trails, not doing speed workouts. They think it's not for them or they're making themselves believe that because it's scary. It's intimidating and maybe they're not sure they can do it. Maybe they're not sure if they're going to be able to follow through and achieve what they want to achieve. Maybe they believe they're going to come up a little short, and that's scary, and that's hard to deal with. So rather than coming to terms with it, we're just going to say that it's for super serious runners, and that's why I'm not trying. 
That's why I'm not going to go to the track and do a speed workout. That's why I'm not going to go investigate some trails. That's sad. I don't mean that sad like sad pathetic. It's actually like sad because you're missing out on, I believe, something that's going to bring you joy, something that's going to reaffirm something that maybe you don't know, but maybe the rest of us do, is that you're kind of a badass, okay? Because when I see people at the track or on the trails, I'm like, they're badasses. It doesn't dawn on me to try to measure how fast they're running the quarter mile I see them running. I just know if you're there and you're doing it, you're badass, period. Again, it's not about distance. It's not about pace. It's about you and what you're doing and why you're doing it. So if you're hitting a track or a trail, if you're doing a speed run and you're doing it because you want to challenge yourself and it's fun and invigorating and exciting and it reminds you that you're alive, yeah, that's badass. I don't need to see any splits on your watch, okay? I see enough. All right, next, you shouldn't run in bad weather. Now, um, there's, there's an asterisk here, okay? Because if the bad weather is dangerous, then yeah, you shouldn't run of it. But if the bad weather is just what you're classifying as bad, as if you're looking at it as, um, you know, you're giving a weather report for the masses, and you are equating, like, it's raining, you know, maybe compared to blue skies and cool weather and a nice little breeze. Like, yeah, that's that's bad weather, I guess. But you can run in that. You can run in the snow as long as there's not, like, ice underneath it or it's overly cold, which can be dangerous. So let's let's just define bad weather as not perfect. Let's define bad weather as not ideal. That doesn't mean you can't run in it. But, but, but. I also don't like the other side, which is you can run in any weather. That's just not true. That's just not true. And the people who say that are wildly irresponsible. Wildly irresponsible. Because unless they are couching it in terms of, I'm speaking about people that are prepared to do it, are trained in being able to do it, and have the necessary resources and support systems around them to be able to run in this type of weather, then they need to shut up and stop saying such utterly dangerous, foolhardy things. Okay, moving on. But it's important because, you know, I I hear people trying to act like, I guess it's, you know, not to use the term again since I just did it, like, two seconds ago, but badass, like it's badass to put yourself in dangerous positions or it's badass to put yourself in a dangerous positions and not care that as a result of you being in a dangerous position, there's the possibility that you're going to be putting other people in a dangerous position or by putting yourself in a dangerous position, you're also screwing with the people who care about you, okay, who would just say, listen, is it worth it to go for a run during intense lightning like is that like i know you get your kicks off that and you think it's fun and there's a cool little video you took and the lightning hits so close but we care about you it's not cool it's not cool at all it's also not cool to the first responders that are going to come and have to help you when you willingly put yourself in a dangerous position and now you need help and you're taking the accessibility to them away from someone who maybe is in a dangerous position by no fault of their own and also needs help. So I just think it's really, really, really selfish to put yourself in extremely dangerous weather conditions on purpose without the necessary uh, support or environment that really basically negates the danger of that, okay? So just, just think about it. Especially when you're trying to tell somebody, like, I'm hardcore and no bad weather ever stops me. Just think about who you're telling and how they may be reading that. Because what you should say is, unless it's, you know, really dangerous, and then I wouldn't do that because I'm not an idiot. I mean, that's what you should say. Okay. We've only got a couple more because I actually want to <laughs> I actually want to do a couple of these. So I think it would be fun every once in a while to be coming back like, hey, I got more terrible advice. So, and yes, we'll do some great advice too, but, you know, it's kind of fun to do terrible advice it cracks me up especially if you know some people who say some of this stuff because now you realize that what they're saying is so utterly moronic but all right next one faster and further are all that matter you're gonna have some of these hardcore you know people who are like look the only thing that matters is are you running a faster personal best are you going further than you've ever gone before that's all that matters and that's why 
I, I like I don't enjoy them using the term personal best those types of people you can use personal record that's fine like this is the fastest i've ever run the 1500 meters this is the fastest i've ever run 8k this is the fastest i've ever run a 20k great cool but your personal best is not always going to be your fastest your personal best is not always going to be your furthest i mean i can tell you the best mile i ever ran was not my fastest mile so if you're measuring the validity of your running, the success of your running, how kick-ass your running is, and it's only based on the numbers, you're missing out on most of your best performances. In fact, you're missing out on almost all of them. Because if you're measuring it solely by numbers, then your fastest can only be one performance. Your furthest can only be one performance. But if you're measuring it by more than that, then your best performances, well, you can have an infinite variety of best performances. And I think that also allows you to unlock an entire other world within your running of how you're measuring success. And you've heard me say it before, measure success as many ways as you can. All right? So that's, that's some pretty terrible advice, faster and further are all that matter, all right? Here's another one that's super important to me because I've got two more, all right? And these are the last two for episode 15 of Coach Bennett's podcast, all right? So second to last one. If your running is fun, then your running isn't serious. Uh, I, I'm, I just, I, I could not. I'm like, it's hard for me to put the words together on how I want to answer this one because it's so, so stupid. It's such terrible advice. Like, I always get upset when I see people commenting, especially on on younger athletes, but it's adults too, that if they're having fun, if they're enjoying the run, that they're not taking it seriously. Now, don't get me wrong. Like, there are certain efforts that it's really hard to be cracking up laughing and hitting the effort, okay? Like, your fastest paces or, you know, intervals or parts of a run towards the end where like you're really really fatigued and you really just you're trying to be efficient with your energy so it's really hard to just be completely laughing and fooling around when you're trying to do something at that level but that's the minority of moments or in the course of a week if you're on a recovery run you should be laughing you should be having a good time. You should be telling stories. You should be arguing. Arguing, by the way, can be fun. It doesn't always have to turn into some heated nightmare where people are getting offended and breaking up relationships. It can bring people a lot closer because you can respect somebody for their viewpoints that are different than yours, and you can learn something. Sometimes you can even find out you're wrong. Whoa. Do you know how great that is to find out you were wrong? It's actually really great because you've been walking around wrong for a really long time, and finally somebody made you realize it, which is terrific. It's basically an epiphany. It's awesome. So you can do that for other people too, by the way. But you should be having fun when you're running. It is a form of play. It should be a good time. And like I said, that doesn't mean you're unserious. You can be unbelievably focused and serious about this passion of yours. You want to get better or you want to improve some aspect of it or there's a consistency to it that is your drive. It's your purpose. Terrific. You can still laugh and have fun. You can still be goofy. You can still screw around. You can still make your way to the front of the group drop a fart, and then go back to the back because by the time you get back to the back and they start realizing somebody dropped a fart, no one's going to know it was you and you're in the back just laughing. And what you do is you be like the second or third person to be like, that's disgusting. Who did that? Because now you're like, everyone's like, well, obviously he or she didn't do it because they're aghast at this. So this is the stuff that you can do. And I'm not saying I ever did that, but I saw people do it and they thought they were sneaky. But why are you running to the front of the pack hanging out for like eight seconds and then pretty quickly sliding to the back and then suddenly there's a stink bomb that went off. I'm sorry. I know what you just did. I respect it. It's hilarious. That's why I'm not going to let everyone know you did it. But afterwards, you better believe I'm coming up to you saying, I know you did it. I want you to know that. And at some point, I'm going to be asking you for a favor and you're going to owe me one, right? And you better say yes, because you do. You dropped ass in the middle of this run, and I could have called you out on it, and I didn't. But my point is, running is supposed to be fun. It's a sport. It is a form of play. 
please, please, please realize that if you want to run seriously in this sport, it has to be fun. It doesn't mean it's always going to be laugh out loud crazy fun, but the core of this play should be fun. The second you remove fun from the sport of running, you remove the possibility for you to ever run your best. Okay, you can rewind and play that one again because it's a gem, what I just told you, because it's the straight truth. Okay, last piece of terrible advice in some terrible advice for runners, episode 15 of Coach Bennett's podcast. It's a classic. We all know it. Hopefully, we all don't love it. Running sucks. Um, I beg to differ. I'll tell you what does suck a lot, though running the wrong way. And I think some people are misconstruing running with running the wrong way. I get it. I understand it, especially people who don't know better or have not had the guidance maybe that some of us have had that have been lucky enough to have about how to actually run the right way. And not only that, but run in different ways. The fact that there are fartlek runs and hill workouts, the fact that you can um, explore parks and explore your neighborhood, the fact that you can race on cross-country courses and you can race on outdoor tracks, and yes, you can run on indoor tracks. You can do road races, and it's not just the marathon. There's that local road mile that you can do. There's all of these different aspects. You can travel and do destination races. You can you can meet up with run crews when you're visiting a city for business or you're in school. You can join a run club. There's all of these different things and avenues and trails that you can take and run on to really fully experience running. But if you've never been taught how to run the right way, which means every time you run, it's ending in what you're perceiving as failure or just more evidence that you're not a runner, more evidence that you can't do this, that you're not enough, well, yeah, then running's going to suck. What a terrible reminder that you're not good enough over and over again when it's like, no, this has nothing to do with it. Here, we'll give an example. Basketball, okay? I think everyone has held a basketball. Everyone's probably shot a basketball. If your right hand is your dominant hand, then trying to shoot the ball with just your left hand is probably not going to be the way to do it. But if for whatever reason you think the way to actually play basketball is to shoot with your weaker hand, you're probably going to get flustered with the sport of basketball pretty quickly. But if you have someone there who can say, hey, here's actually how you hold the ball. Okay, and, and this is the form that you want. This is the follow through that you want. And instead of us trying at half court to make these shots, which you seem to be doing and failing at because well, you're using one, your left hand and you're right handed and two half courts really far away. Let's get closer to the basket. Let's get closer to the basket. Let's work on our form. Let's do a few drills here. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to be right by the basket, and we're going to learn how to use the backboard, and we're going to make some shot. Oh, you just made a shot. Doesn't that feel good? Hey, is that a smile? All right. I didn't see you smiling at half court when you were throwing the ball, we'll just say, towards the basket. It never actually made it to the basket. My point is you can imagine how frustrating and really awful basketball would be if you didn't know how to play basketball the right way, if you didn't even know the basics on how to do it, and so many people don't even know the basics, they think every run is supposed to be really, really hard. They think every run is supposed to be from the gun, as quick as they can go, pushing as hard as they can go, and at some point, I guess they think they're going to be able to do that forever. So they're shocked when they fall apart. They're shocked when it becomes really, really hard really, really early. And as a result, they think they're just not good enough when really that's not it at all. You're just running the wrong way. So when I hear people and they go, oh, running sucks, and then I dig a little bit deeper, well, tell me about your last run. And I say, well, that's not how you're supposed to run. Or they might know how to run, but they don't realize that running doesn't have to be the same run every single day. They don't realize that they can actually mix things up. They've never heard of a fart lick. They don't, they don't know that you know running up a hill and then jogging or walking down the hill and doing that a couple times is like a legitimate workout. To them, they think, so wait, I run to the top of the hill and then I go to the bottom? Like, But isn't that like cheating or like walking to the bottom or going slower? Like, what are you talking about? No, it, not at all. 
they don't realize that you can go on gnarly trails and feel like you're 15 or again, just you know, running around and going over roots and having to like jump over shit and get through uh, streams and like it's very difficult for people to imagine this because it's unimaginable to them because they don't think they're runners because somebody, maybe themselves or maybe somebody else, like I said at the beginning, told them they're not runners. So all of these things are not available to them or they just don't believe they're good enough. And yeah, if that's what running is to somebody, then I can see why they would say running sucks. But no, running doesn't suck. Running doesn't need to suck. Running can be badass. How do I know that? Well, because I'm a runner. So there you have it. You're surprised I have so much terrible advice, right? I mean, it's it's usually pretty funny because we're like, I didn't know that you were so full of horrible, terrible, miserable, no good advice, but I am. And the cool thing is I've got even more of it. So we're going to get to do this again, but that's it for today. That's it for the first edition, the first volume, the first episode of some terrible advice for runners, right? I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a good time. Um, I was looking forward to doing this, even though the last couple days have been really busy. I, I didn't, tell you at the front kind of what I've been up to but there's been a decent amount of traveling there's been some time in the studio a lot of time in the studio with with the great Daniel the engineer uh, recorded a great podcast actually uh, yesterday with coach Tammy for two coach Bennett's talking that podcast it's a great one um, and it's about starting, starting over, getting goals uh, off the ground, and, and basically how you have to have the right mindset for that in terms of um, the size of what you're taking on early on to get going, to build consistency. It's kind of a fun name for that episode. It's called Size Doesn't Always Matter. And yeah, so I thought it was pretty good. Um, and yeah, there's there's been a lot of cool stuff going on. Um, I've been kept very, very busy, and because of all the traveling, I have to say I've I got a fall on the sword here. It's my fault. I have not been to the P.O. box to get the mail. But I'm going to say this. Absolutely, positively, the mailbox will be visited very soon, in short order, even though technically I'm traveling tomorrow. Um, so I'm probably not going to be able to get it for the next one either, unless Coach Tammy goes... And she gets it, and then she can go through some of the mail for me. Yeah, maybe that, because I'm going to be on the road recording the next one too. Crazy. Anyway, and then things are going to calm down, because this is one of my favorite times of the year, because I get to go to cross-country meets. And I haven't really been to any cross-country meets yet, and I'm starting to get the shakes, because I want my cross-country. It's my favorite sport within the sport. And if you've never been to a cross-country meet, you should check and see if there's one locally near you to watch, to cheer, or to actually compete in. Because yes, you are a runner. And anyone that told you that you're not is a fool. And not only are you a runner, you could be a cross-country runner. All you need to do is cross the line of a cross-country race. You're a cross-country runner. And believe me, everyone should try cross-country. It is... So much fun. All right. Please enjoy the time between this and the next time we're talking. This weekend, by the way, is the Diamond League final. I should mention that for all you runners out there and future runners. The Diamond League is basically the um, group of track and field meets over the last few months that make up... um, elite track and field okay so the diamond league final is the final one the calendar and this year for the first time ever it's taking place in the united states at hayward field legendary hayward field at the university of oregon it's this weekend september 16th and 17th and it is shaping up to be epic so i'll put a link in the show notes of where you can watch the diamond league final the meet That is going to be the Diamond League final because this is how they do it. They go to certain places and the Diamond League final is, 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 you know, it's similar to like if you watch college football, meaning American football. Sometimes certain bowl games will be the national championship games. Some years it's like the Fiesta Bowl was the national championship game. And in other years, the Orange Bowl was the national championship game. Well, in track and field this year, the Prefontaine Classic is the Diamond League final. It's named after the great Steve Prefontaine, the American distance runner from the 70s. 
Um, but yeah, it's this weekend, September 16th and 17th. Check the show notes and cheer on these athletes that are a part of your sport. Okay? Have fun. Take care of each other. Take care of yourself. And I will meet you next time. Thank you so much for listening to Coach Bennett's podcast today. And if you're not already following or subscribed to the podcast on whatever platform you're listening, well, I really wish you would because it helps a lot. Also, check out the show notes because you'll find a link to Coach Bennett's newsletter as well as all the social media sites that I'm on. Places like Threads and Facebook and Instagram and Mastodon and YouTube and even the artist formerly known as Twitter, whatever that dumpster fire is called today, you'll find a link to it because I'm on there. Thank you so much again for listening. And until next time, take care of yourself.